Hey everybody, how's it going? We're gonna do a bit of a different kind of video today. We're gonna be pitching Reboot's fifth season, answering this question that came in from Griffin Tremaine. If you could have it your way, what would be the basic plot of episode one? Okay, so essentially if I have creative control of this project, a fifth season of Reboot, what direction do I take it in? Uh, just a bit of a disclaimer before we get started. I am not in any way, shape, or form a professional writer. I guess I wrote like some descriptions of food products at one job that I had, but definitely not a, a, a professional. So um, this is purely just an exercise for fun. If I'm given creative control of this project, I'm probably, at the very least, bringing on as many of the original creators as I can to consult, even if they don't want to write. But assuming that's not an option and I have to be the one to write this, uh, this is how I would do it. So of course, Tony J, legendary voice actor, he's no longer with us. That's a real shame, especially for the purposes of this exercise, because of course, Tony J played Megabyte. Megabyte is the baddie of the series, and the series ended with him taking over and saying that he's about to kill everybody. You could do one of two things, basically. You can either recast the role, which is what they did on The Guardian Code. They got another actor named Timothy Brummond to play Megabyte. And I stand by what I said in my Guardian Code review. I think he's he's pretty good most of the time, except when he's raising his voice. When he's raising his voice, it's really obvious that that's not him. Always ready. But when he's just talking in the sort of normal speaking voice, he can mostly pull it off. When will you learn that sneaking into my fortress is most unacceptable? If if we were dead set on on just picking up this fifth season right after the fourth one and you had to get a guy to play Megabyte, I think that guy would be fine, just, you just can't have him raise his voice. But that's not what I would do. I would not want a replacement of the original. Uh, I wouldn't want an impression. I would personally want to just try and find a creative solution. And so for that reason and for others, I think that ultimately the best direction for a continuation of Reboot would be to set it in real time 20 years after the end of season 4. And that I would do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, it, you'd be doing yourself a disservice on two fronts if you tried to cram a whole bunch of exposition into the beginning explaining how we all, you know, got here and what the situation is. The the old fans don't need to hear it and the new fans are still going to be confused. So, I mean, I just, I wouldn't want to do a direct continuation. I'd want to sort of have this be a universe where it's a very different feeling from the universe of the original reboot because 20 years, for us, it's like a single generation. But to these computer people, you know, 20 years, that's like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years for them. The original was very much sort of this is brand new, we're, we're on the cusp of this this sort of inter-system thing that's going on in, in season four. Can you really believe we are alone? That Mainframe is the only system in cyberspace? All the systems sort of coming together with the, with the map, the world map that you've got there. So I think that this would be an interesting evolution to that world if you're kind of, you're picking it up literally in real time. Sort of like Star Wars, where it feels very old, it feels very lived in. There's all this ancient stuff that, you know, maybe some people don't believe in, or it's thought of as myth, you know, maybe it's like the Guardians, they weren't real, that's just a legend, you know, kind of something like that, you know what I mean? I would also make it so that these cyber people or computer people, whatever you want to call them, the sprites and the, and the binomes and, and everyone else, have a, a better understanding of users this time around than they did in the original series. Because let's face it, by the time YouTube rolled around and, you know, there's all these videos of our goofy ass looking mugs zipping around cyberspace, they're, they're gonna kind of start to put the pieces together, you know, what's going on here. So I would have them be a little bit more self-aware in that way. Organic life forms. Oh, how quaint. You can introduce all sorts of real world allegories in there, like, you know, Nietzsche, God is dead, like, the user is dead. We know all about these users, they're just schlubs like us, you know, who even cares? So I, I feel like there'd be interesting angles 
to take on that approach. I think maybe because of that, um, you make it so that games, because now online games are such a big thing, the, the sentient programs no longer participate in games. Uh, it, it's, it's, con it's just considered way too dangerous. All of the sort of user combating is done just by game sprites who are not like Andrea kind of game sprites, but more like the mindless, like the carrot sprites from the dungeon episode in season one, you know, stuff like that. And so what I would do is, I'd center the plot around a new trio of protagonists, of new uh, sprites. Like, you know, you had Bob, Dodd, and Enzo as like the trio of main characters. Because I think that if you're moving the story to present day, which I think is the right decision, especially if you want to continue to do things like pop culture references and other stuff like that, modern sort of computer jokes. I think you also need to try and bring in some characters who fit this new kind of world. And then you bring in, you know, various uh, parts of the original cast in as supporting players. Most prominently, I think I would want to have Dot. So I'd have her basically be the older mentor kind of figure. If you've ever seen that movie Secret of Nim, the Nicodemus character in that movie, where it's like this, this really ancient kind of person that just sort of sits in a chair and sort of like the, the old man in the tree from Game of Thrones. And, and I think that the reason that, that all of this is happening is because Megabyte went on to basically destroy Mainframe. Make it, you know, completely uninhabitable, like the system's about to crash, everything's about to go completely to hell. You could do something clever where it's like, there's a USB key or a, or a I guess it's 2001, maybe a CD, a CD-ROM or something, where they're all evacuating and, 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 you know, Dot and a handful of other characters are the only ones that get off, but you know, Megabyte's a Trojan horse or something, and he went along with them. And you, you can tell this this kind of stuff intermittently through, like, flashbacks, maybe get, like, a different kind of simpler animation style, sort of, I'm thinking, like, that, that one flashback from that Harry Potter movie where Dot is, like, regaling this, like, ancient legend, and, you know, this is something people have heard of, but it's like, a, oh, that's just a story kind of thing, you know what I mean? My thinking here is that since then, Megabyte has gone on to become this sort of entity over the eons um, in, like, a really dark, twisted parallel to Dot, where he's just consuming uh, all of these systems and, and he's just sort of, so you make him like a similar thing to the Beast Planet from Shadow Raiders. Megabyte has become this thing that just comes out of nowhere in cyberspace and destroys your system and, and so in the real world what it would be is this like virus that, you know, you get and then it just kaputs, you know, it, it takes your computer offline. Because we're not having Tony J back, you can kind of do megabyte with like sort of whispers and archive dialogue, stuff like that. And then in addition to that, you could do like a new kind of virus character who's like maybe something that megabytes created, like a kind of like an avatar, like a harbinger of doom. Like, you know, Galactus has the silver surfer. Maybe this new virus character has like a rivalry with the new protagonist. And then, you know, all these different possibilities. I'm just sort of spitballing here. You got these new characters, right? And um, maybe at the beginning of the series, Mega Mega Planet uh, eats the main character's planet when he's like five years old, and he and he narrowly escapes. And then it, it's you know, he becomes an adrenaline junkie, and so he wants to get as close to the games as possible because they're these this like super dangerous thing that that's really taboo, and you're not supposed to go in and do it. And it's you know then then he meets Dot later on, and it's like oh I, I was totally right, there was a Mega Planet, and it ah, it's a thing. And so your your whole arc, your kind of story with Dot is that she's devoted to this mission of, of taking out Megabyte for good and stopping his, his rampage of destruction. And at the same time, like, she feels guilty because not only is he from her system, he kind of originated from her system, but she also feels guilty because her friends were not able to escape, or most of them weren't anyway, and uh, not only that, but she almost married him, and she shouldn't feel guilty necessarily, but she does because that's her character, and that's sort of the thing that was set up earlier. Their lives are ruined, and it's all my fault. It's all my fault. Oh, what have I done? I lost the game, and I destroyed Mainframe. Dot is kind of bringing awareness of this, this looming threat 
into a new generation of protagonists and sort of acts as like a guiding mentor. And so you make the goal of the series basically stopping Megabyte and you don't have to be so serious about it either, obviously. You know, this is still a cartoon. I think you'd, you'd probably want to put in a few more characters as well. Like, I'd, I'd, I think it'd be great to bring back Hack and Slash. You could get Gary Chalk and Scott McNeil back in there voicing those two. I think Mike the TV might be great to include. Maybe he's got a vlog or something. This is Mike the TV with a breaking news story. I don't know. You, you, can, you can do lots of fun stuff with Mike the TV. Get Mike Donovan back doing that. And maybe Frisket is in there too. Yeah, Frisket is like there. You know, he's he's on the core team with the three that goes on all the missions. You know, like get get a few char characters in there. But I wouldn't want to reuse the whole cast over again. You could maybe even try and I'm not sure how you would do it, but you you get Bob involved somehow maybe. Maybe Bob has some sort of, he was like reawakened or there was a, you know, some hand wavium kind of thing happens with him. I don't know. You, I'm, I'm a big picture kind of guy. You, you fill in the details. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's some reason why uh, they need to go into games to get something. It's just, you know, these online games. And so every episode you'd have them go into like a different game. In one episode you've maybe got like a Call of Duty and then in another episode it's like League of Legends and they're, they're playing minions and they've got to figure out some way to make that work. And card game battles, they're doing like a sort of like a Hearthstone or a Yu-Gi-Oh type of thing. You could do all sorts of fun stuff with modern games like that, sort of online multiplayer kind of games and maybe the catch is that Dot or or maybe Bob or whatever someone else from the original series is giving your your new leads the ability to reboot which is sort of a thing that the sprites have kind of evolved past they don't really do that anymore because this is you know again many 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 generations later and then, you know, maybe at the end of the season, because they understand users a little bit better now, they've got some more information, and they do something where they gotta make it so Mainframe has to get hooked back up so that you can evacuate everyone else that's there, and maybe it gets restarted like it did at the end of Season 3, and then old Dot, this depressing kind of a character, yeah, has to make some noble sacrifice or something, but when Mainframe reboots, you get younger Dot back because, you know, the same thing with Enzo from Season 3, and in, like, the last battle, you get all the old characters come back for this big triumphant, you know, battle. They gotta infiltrate the Megabyte base and the Megabyte planet or whatever it is, and you do this big kind of blowout where it's this huge celebration to the whole show and then you know you get Matrix back and Bob back and everyone's back and it's happily ever after but then you can leave open the possibility of it continuing without Megabyte now Megabyte's gone he's he's dealt with he's defeated and then you can take this new virus character hypothetically that you've spent the last season building up and developing and take that character and run as the new villain in the, in, in the next season if that's something that you wanted to do or maybe you could do like a one-off episode where they need to find some sort of reassembled hexadecimal data the dot has been able to mine out of binomes that had her antivirus in it over the years and they had to get her to do something to help and then in season two she comes back and she's the villain because you know Shirley Milner is still around and she's awesome so why wouldn't you get her in there somewhere so yeah that's that's my idea um, if I were given for some reason total creative control of, of the fifth season of reboot and I wasn't able to hire anybody else who actually knows how to write that that's probably what I would do um, let me know down in the comments if you like my pitch, what would you do differently? I'm sure it'd be totally different from mine. I, I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. You can probably do something a lot better than I did. Let me know uh, how, how you like this. Do, do you want to see some more things like this in the future? I don't know. You know, let, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, until next time, thanks very much once again for watching and take care. Rainmaker, if you end up stealing this idea from me, I want some, some goddamn royalty checks. <laughs>